Hello and welcome back to Las Vegas. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sean from Miles to Memories and it's exciting to fly. It's been a long time since I had been on an airplane saying goodbye to Sean Reese and Ellie as they stayed behind in Las Vegas for the weekend and Jasmine and I headed off to Tucson, Arizona and I thought it'd be interesting to show you guys what McCarran Airport is like right now, what it is like to fly right now. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy the channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, here we are at Terminal 1 at McCarran International Airport, and we are getting ready to fly. Check-in was fairly simple, and now we are just dropping off the bag. The A and B gates were built in the 1960s, and now we are walking through the promenade that connects the areas of the airport. This area is home to a number of restaurants and shops, and of course, the gaming is alive and well right now. In certain areas of the airport, gaming is shut off. The machines are shut off, like in the baggage claim area, and you'll see that in a little bit. But here, you can still play, eat, dine, and take a look around. This is a Sunday morning. Our flight was at 10 a.m. This is probably around 8.30 to 9 a.m. when this was filmed, so fairly busy in certain areas, quiet in others. Before we head through security and on to our flights and to check out the CND gates, we're gonna look at the baggage claim. This area was renovated just a couple of years ago with this brand new sparkly floor and Las Vegas mural. I really like this floor. What do you think of it? Let's uh, discuss it in the comments. I like this style of floor. It's used throughout the airport now, and you'll see in the Seagates later that they are renovating the floors to something very similar. Vegas wouldn't be Vegas without advertising campaigns. I guess once you walk through that arch, everything stays behind. So this is the Terminal 1 baggage claim. Very quiet here in baggage claim for a Sunday morning, but the check-in desks and the airlines are pretty busy for people flying out. Resorts World Las Vegas is coming. Check out our construction videos for that. I'll have more shots of this in a future video, but you can see that in scale model over in baggage claim. Second floor. As we head back up, we are going to head through security, but before we do that, let's take a look at the Howard W. Cannon Aviation Museum. Now the main display of this museum is right here. You're about to see it in this section of the airport, but there are other displays in the A gates, the B gates, the C gates, the D gates, the ticketing area, and in the North Las Vegas and Henderson airports as well. So there are definitely a lot of parts of this museum, but this display is right in the main areas, doesn't matter where you're flying out of in Terminal 1, has a lot of interesting artifacts, and of course this beautiful old school Hacienda airplane, which I love looking at. Definitely worth checking this out and any of the ancillary displays in any of the other terminals. PPE, of course, is a big thing now when you're flying. You have to wear a mask and it's gonna cost you. 750 for a disposable mask or for three disposable masks and uh, 425 for the sanitizer now we are flying out of the c gates but they do share security with the d gates and that's the area that we are approaching here hanging just over the baggage claim security wasn't too busy on this morning so it was a quick walk through into tsa pre-check we have that through our global entry that we have paid for through our American Express Platinum and other cards. This one area is a little weird. This is when you get back to the pre-check, you have to go through this narrow hallway. And once you get through security, you are at the area where you can take the tram to the C or the D gates, or you can walk to the C gates and the A and B gates airside. And that's where you go here. This is the walkway to the C gates, which will get you eventually to A and B. But right now we are going to head out to the D gates. The D gates are the newest area of Terminal 1, but we will get into the full history in just a second. But let's go and head and take a ride out. This two kilometer people mover system opened in 1998 with the D gates, partially above ground, partially below ground. Let's take a ride.
McCarran Field evolved from the earlier Alamo Field and began operations on December 19, 1948. In its first year of operations, McCarran Field served 35,000 passengers, but the casino industry grew through the 1950s, and by 1959, this airport had handled 959,603 passengers in just one year. The terminal, Terminal 1, was built in 1963 as the airport continued to grow. The original terminal was over on Las Vegas Boulevard, but the current Terminal 1, A-Gates, 1963, and in 1969, the airport got its international roots and was renamed McCarran International Airport. Again, this is the D-Gates area. This opened in 1998 and had, was added on to all the way through 2008. And this area used to not feature those shops down there. But my favorite part about this is these views of the runway. And on this particular day, the clouds added a lot of atmosphere here. You get great views of planes and a lot of people don't go to this area behind the Starbucks so, so it tends to be a little quieter than some of the gate areas and the main walkways in the terminal. Definitely an area to check out. Lots of great plane spotting. I think here we're going to get some nice views of these American Airlines jets and then on the other side Delta, Frontier, United also fly out of these D gates as well along with a handful of other airlines. One of my favorite parts of this area of the airport is the Centurion Lounge, the American Express Lounge for Platinum and Centurion card holders. It's unfortunately closed right now. A lot of these lounges had closed and now have now reopened, but they announced that the Las Vegas Lounge, which was the original of these Centurion Lounges in the United States, will reopen next year, expanded. And you can see here how this wall is sort of bulging out of the old footprint. And this lounge is always very busy, so the extra space is definitely welcome. And I am excited to see what this all looks like when it reopens next year. You don't have to head all the way to the Strip to see the fabulous Las Vegas sign. There's a mini version here in the airport. And one other unique aspect that you probably haven't thought about is unlike many other airports, Las Vegas McCarran International Airport has a smoking area inside the terminal where you can play and smoke. And here you go, a lot of people in there taking advantage of this area, smoking, gambling, watching other people play. This was a very popular spot in the D-Gates surprisingly. Now just a few years ago, they converted part of the D gates into international gates so they can either be domestic or international. Terminal 1 was built again in 1963, but Terminal 3 was built back in 2012 and it serves all the international airlines but in an effort to expand capacity, they built a tunnel underground from these D gates all the way through to the E gates so people can use those for customs and immigration. That's why you see that duty free store. And here we are looking at a flight boarding. People not really social distancing here, and everyone just waiting to get on the plane. Joanne, from the boarding area, we're coming up to Maple 1836 for your immediate boarding. So here is an example of the gates that are flex gates. These are both international and domestic. So domestic, you would get just off the plane. For international, you would be locked into that hallway where you would go underground into the tunnel and off to Terminal 3. A lot of people don't know about this kids area. It's tucked away in the corner over the entry escalators. Really cool entrance to the kids' play area, too. Pretty cool area. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the D gates were completed in 2008 after the first part opened in 1998. The total number of gates here is 44. 
and it is connected underground for those international gates to Terminal 3, which opened in 2012 to replace the Terminal 2. Terminal 2 used to be the international terminal. It's now gone. The building completely gone. It only lasted from 1991 till 2012. We're going to take the blue line back to Terminal 1 and then the tram out to the Seagates from there. This is the Terminal 1 tram station and the D-Gates tram and the Seagates tram run parallel. Now the D-Gates tram is by far the longest one at around 2 kilometers. The Seagates tram is only about a quarter mile long and... As I showed you earlier, you can actually walk out to the Seagates if you wish uh, via that long hallway, although it's all under construction now, and you'll see that in just a minute. I'm gonna go back through those doors where it says A, B, and Seagates. As McCarran Airport grew in popularity, they formed a plan called McCarran 2000 to expand the airport and make it a world-class facility. And one of the first things done was building their massive nine-story parking garage in 1985, and then these Seagates in 1987, which includes this tram. The Seagates are almost entirely used by Southwest Airlines, but right now they are heavily under construction. Most of the gates are closed. And even as we pull in here, look to the right, you'll notice there's no carpet in that area. Everything under construction. I'll get you some behind the scenes looks in just a bit. This is the final stop. Exit now for the Seagates. Please check. Onto the sea gates, and you can immediately tell the difference here. This is an older terminal, and everything's a little bit more cramped, less space to walk around, less seats, and now almost everything is closed because of either construction or just being slow. So, this is really a shadow of what it normally is, but thankfully, things will look better very, very soon. Let's walk around a little bit, take a look at what it's like to fly out of the sea gates right now, and then I'll be back with you. Karen International Airport is one of the busiest airports in the country, and it features a total of 92 gates spread across the five concourses. They all have letters A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, and D are in Terminal 1, and E is in Terminal 3. Now this is the food court out on the sea gates, and normally that door that's closed way ahead would connect to the other side of the gates, but that whole area of the concourse is completely shut off and under major construction. Unfortunately, with so many shops and restaurants closed here, the lines are pretty long for the few things that are open, and I wouldn't recommend this being a place you want to hang out before a flight. Try to not spend too much time here. This is a look at what the terminal looks like right now, the areas that are under construction. The carpet completely ripped out, all the seats gone, all the machines gone. As I said earlier, you can walk from the main terminal out to the sea gates. And normally it's this beautiful area with tons of restaurants and shops. And unfortunately now it is fully under construction. Here's another look over the wall. And then we are gonna take a look at the walkway, which again is normally this beautiful area with lots of things to see and do, but now it's just very narrow, closed off as they redoing that floor. It looks like they're doing some sort of sprayed concrete, so maybe similar to what we saw in the baggage claim area. And I really do like that look, so we'll see how this all turns out. But for now, so many restaurants and shops here in the Seagates at McCarran International Airport are closed. And the D-Gate's a little bit better, but hopefully better days, brighter days ahead. And I really like the aesthetic that they're going for with these renovations. So I can't wait for that to happen.
One of the side effects of doing construction is they need a place to put everything. These black curtains take up half of the terminal area that they're using, so creating even less space, and they just house all of the slot machines that are not being used around the airport, and there are a lot of them everywhere. Yeah, this just really isn't a pleasant place to fly out of right now, but hopefully soon it's going to look nicer than ever, and the Seagates definitely needed a renovation. They were feeling very dated, very cramped, so good to see them getting some love, especially now when things are a bit slower. It's almost time to board our flight. Southwest Airlines, of course, blocking the middle seats, making it as safe as possible. And their normal boarding process of calling up about 60 people has been changed. So they call groups of 10 people at a time to board. Let's get on the plane. And then I got some other cool things to show you as we take off, see the strip, and then see some cool abandoned planes over in Tucson. People don't want to social distance, unfortunately. Let's get on the plane. Or the airplane, so go ahead and just pick that window or that aisle. One of the nice things about Southwest is the empty middle seats. And just like every other airline, they require a mask at all times. So one is being worn at all times by everybody. No problems at all on this flight. And it felt good to be back in the airport. Welcome aboard Southwest Airlines. There's a look at the tram heading underground as we get ready to see Las Vegas from the sky and hit the air one more time. This is exciting. I don't normally go more than a month or two without getting on an airplane, and I hadn't been on one since March, and I hadn't seen the world from above since then, and I was so glad to be able to get these beautiful shots of McCarran. Taking off. You can see all of the Las Vegas Strip and the brand new Allegiant Stadium as well, plus the various terminals. This is the C gates we're looking at right now, along with the A and B gates off to the left with those spirit planes and the runways. The beautiful McCarran International Airport and the beautiful Las Vegas Strip. One more cool thing to show you. Let's fly around a bit and then I'll have that for you. We were flying into Tucson, the flight went quite well. And one interesting thing I noticed as we descended, Tucson is one of the airports where airlines store a lot of their planes that aren't being used right now because of the dry weather and the conditions. And you could see tons of them, dozens and dozens of planes everywhere as we flew into Tucson International Airport. Stored, hope to hit the skies once again soon. A reality of current times. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about McCarran, what you think about the flying experience. It was fun. I hope to do it again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.